Earth, legendary writer Mongane Wale Sirote's praised poem title, a uh, praised poem entitled uh, Sikahle Lu Or, will showcase at the State Theatre from tomorrow. The play depicts the life and times of South African human rights activist and former ANC president Oliver Tambo. Tambo served as president of the organization from 1967 to 1991, and the play follows his childhood in Mbizana in the Eastern Cape to the struggle and his role in the ANC. So joining us this morning to tell us more about the play is the creative director, Ntsieng Mukhoro, is in studio with us. And one of the actors in the play as well, Tabo Ramaine, uh, both of you, welcome. It's great to have you with us here in studio. Thank um, you for having us. I've been working on the pronunciation. <laughs> tell us about Sikahlelu um, Aurar. So you mean the name or just the, the, the name, whole, the, name. the production? So Sikahlelu Aurar in Kosa mean uh, the praise, it's praising mm. um, a person. So there was a bit of a confusion, or there is a bit of a confusion. People constantly ask us, why are you kicking OR, you know? <laughs> but we had that they, discussion because this morning, Because that's actually. a Zulu yes. uh, thing when you say Sikathela, but in Khosa when you say Sikathela, you are praising a person. That makes a lot more sense. And, and, and because <laughs> um, the whole context of the play comes from the adaptation of the praise poetry, oh, right. which was written by Professor Wale So, uh, th So the meaning from then the praise, uh, I think context, would be different from yes. what the actual would mean. Yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely. Yeah. Obviously, Tabo, you um, are incredibly passionate. Just from that one question, I, I can tell that you're, you've really immersed yourself in what it means to be a part of this play. Um, Tell us more about how you, you got to be involved. Um, so, so my director, <laughs> OCT, and, um, so one, one of the shows uh, I did in Market Theatre, and so that's where she actually you know, got inspired by the creativity I had to share with the audience. And, and so we kind of clicked, connected, and she said, no, you know what, I think you would be a perfect fit to come uh, and do the play with me mm. and play, you know, this role. And the role that I'm playing, it's a representation of the writer himself, mm. Professor Wali. And it's a role which is a poet who walks the journey with OR and asking him questions, uh, um, working with him so that he can understand who this legend is, he can understand who this giant is in his life, what he did. And so that then he can bring him back in a space where people can still feel him, his presence, that he, he still leads, still speaks, mm. and he's still, he's still celebrated mm. for the person that he is. So the journey for me has been so much wonderful to immerse myself into the whole thought of the writer, the creative process, the emotional mm. process, and everything that comes together that ha have to shape the work. And the more we shape the work, I realize the work shapes me as well. Mm. And saying it's, it's a play that is very timeless in many ways. You know, we talk about there not being the kind of leadership of the likes of Oliver Tambo, that there is perhaps a gap in, in the kind of leadership role he fulfilled back when he was leader of, of the African National Congress, for example. Do you feel the weight of of that as, as you go into this process? Of course, um, too many times. Um, and also it plays out as a comparison. But I think what I found in the play as I'm working on it, and um, the last line of the book, um, I must mention that this is a book, a praise poet book. Mm -hmm. um, and the last line of the book, there is a question from Ndate uh, Sirote that says, uh, O.R., in this time of history, what would you say and what would you do? You know, so wow. then it takes us back to say, have we followed through what um, Tambo has actually instilled in politics, but in, in the country uh, in totality as a democratic country? Because for me, then he became one of those persons like Moses who took the Israelites out of um, uh, Egypt to Canaan, but never actually uh, saw them prosper wow. in, in that country or in the a country where they went to. So this is Tambo. This is the life a story of Tambo, but now the question also is, is, is he happy, is he turning is he in his grave? 
are we following or are we still instilling the discipline because he was a very disciplined a leader he was very sharp he was very intelligent i mean that guy um he he led the anc from 1967 to 1991 um that's the longest time a, a president could sit with an organization and the people trusted in him but also for him it was not only about the anc but it was about the liberation of the people so he believed so much in the movement of the black people that will shape the country um moving forward and today my question is the gap that you are talking about is are we honoring that as a country today as the leadership of different political parties not only to the ANC do we have the kind of leaders or, or leader that O.R. Tambo was mm. are we honoring um, them, <clears throat> pardon me, as leaders, are we honoring the sacrifice exactly. that they made? Mm. What would they say yeah. in mm. 2023 if they were here? Do yeah. you think about that in, in doing this role? Yes, yes. And, and, and that she spoke about the question, <clears throat> um, especially this question appearing in the play. Uh, and this line is said by me, actually. <laughs> But it, has, it had to be directed to me first before I would, I would actually convey it to the audience. And through that, I believe that because the patterns of the world have changed, the patterns of politics have mm. changed, the patterns of lifestyle have changed, and especially we as young people, uh, like really we're not equipping ourselves enough to understand who we are mm. and how we also challenge the system, how we also challenge uh, the whole, you know, in uh, context that is happening in the world. And so through me, so for me, uh, it gave me that realization of that, oh, there I am as a young person asking myself or hearing these voices of great giants who have came, the leaders, and probably asking me to say, what are you doing with your life? What is the position that you are taking standing you as yourself and how do you empower even other young people mm. so for me it came as as that impact and um i, I knew a, a little bit about our tambo before i did this play but i realized that doing it it gave me an opportunity to learn and to mm. know even mm. the depth of of his own life mm. and so uh for me i felt that it is the reason why i need to do this play this show this narrative to share it even to my audience because other than that African history is an oral history. Mm. We narrate it, we pass yes. it to the next yes. generation so that it can impact them and so that also they can pass it to the next. So we believe that this is the narrative of now so that we can question our people, mm. question ourselves. And so Yang, there's yes. a lovely quote um, from you here in one of the previous interviews that you've given where you say we are invoking his spirit yes. mm -hmm. and we are talking to his spirit. We are inviting him to guide us through these crises that our country is facing now. I'm sure you also, as creative director, feel the weight of what it means to take a story of this magnitude and bring it to a stage in 2023. Jesus, uh, especially at this time, um, where the country is just out of joint, you know, um, uh, to, to speak. Sometimes I question myself, um, I've been asking, um, in the middle of the night, I would just wake up and the question would be, oh, R, why did you choose me to tell this story at this point in time? And in relevance to that is that we are now, we just had the Human Rights Day, which used to be uh, the Shabville massacre yesterday. And this is the week, um, almost a week, if not the next week, when Tambo left the country in 1960 to go to London, um, just to spread the word about the atrocities of this country. And um, going back to your question, this is so heavy. This is, um, it brings back the trauma um, of what we are going through as a country, as a people of this country. And, but also, it sort of gives you a reflection and a flashback 
of what he stood for as a person, not only him, because the book does not only speak of him, it also mentions the, the, the likes of Lembede, the likes of Sisulu, the likes of Puma, the likes of Duma, Boma Mposho, uh, Boma, Boma Sisulu, yes, as mm -hmm. well, and others. And, and the story that we've captured as well, it's the story of Pila, um, Pila who was abducted and um, uh, was killed and he she was only found 20 years later her bones were found 20 years later buried in a shallow grave so we also bring that back because we have lost so much we've gone through so much as a country there are people who uh, lost their family members and up to this date they haven't really found even their bones so we are bringing that into that space have we forgotten what we have gone through. Mm. I feel like as a country now we are bleeding and I'm using that as a metaphor and as a symbolism in the production where we kept on sewing this cloth that we are trying to sew ourselves or knit ourselves back together again but we are struggling even to do that. Mm. Is that so complex mm. to remember who we are? That's what the play reminds us or asks us do we even know where we are going at this point in time? Mm. It feels like the country is just floating and there is nowhere to look where you can find comfort or where you can find hope. But we, as well in the play, we are saying we can get this right. Yeah. But yeah. where do we look? Where do we focus at this point in time? So it is quite heavy. The content is. is quite heavy, but... It it is also a celebration, of is it course. in some way? And music is quite a big part of that, yes. I understand. Um, music, in fact, forming a, a big part of O.R.'s life himself. Yeah, because he loved the music. Um, so, and we have our music director, Un Tsiganganga, from the soil. So, um, he created beautiful music for the show. Mm. I, I really need to commend him for that. Uh, but there are moments, you know, in the play. It's not just heavy, heavy, heavy. Um, uh, the light moment in the play is also when, because it also covers his love story just a bit, when um, he met Me Adelaide Tambo and, and when they got married, the wedding scene. I love it so much. It gives us a, a moment to say, who let's breathe, yeah. you know, yeah. which um, you need, we which need we that. need yeah. in the play. <laughs> so it's not all um, heavy, heavy yeah. stuff, but we yeah. are also able to sit and celebrate the life mm. of Me Adelaide and Minta de Tambo. Yeah. Tambo, are we going to hear you sing? <laughs> of, co <laughs> <laughs> of course, of course. I mean, uh, it's a... It sounds, it's a musical your speaking build. voice makes me think that you have a wonderful singing voice. <laughs> <laughs> I think the Maybe only way, come watch the the only way is just, it, it's, it's in the tasting of the pie. Yeah, I mean, I mean, uh, I mean music is a, it's, it's, it's a big uh, I think, element of this play. Yeah. Uh, I remember when we sat with the writer, Professor Wali, and he spoke about that when O.R. went into different countries in Africa, if uh, he finds a community that doesn't have art, he would influence them yeah. to establish even a choir, a music, a music. Yeah. Because we speak a lot, we even speak about, uh, there's a part of the play where our Tambo even, you know, speak, speaks about the art, in fact, a question about the art, which um, I won't say that much because people you know, have to find that light yeah, when they yeah. come to watch the yeah. show. Don't give too much. Yeah. yeah, but that is a bigger part of also what he had to influence in different countries that mm. he went to, the music that had to change even people's lives, that had to build community, that had to shape. So he celebrated the art so much, mm. he loved the art. And also, I mean, the influence of Professor Wali in terms of literature and mm. how he has compiled this very artistic, nice and beautiful piece, which is now, uh, it's going to be on stage. Mm. It's, it's so wonderful. Uh, sound, movement, dramatic, it's again, like <laughs> everything. Hey, hey, it's going to be crazy. Okay, I think, I think we've sold it. <laughs> I think we've sold it. So, so what can we tell people about? It's the State Theatre. What are the dates? Uh, so, yeah, it's unfortunately that it's running for four days. Oh. Um, <laughs> it's yeah. from the 25th to the 26th. 21st uh, to 26th. Yeah, it's 23rd to 25th, it's 8 p.m., mm -hmm. and then 26th, it's 3 p.m. 
Okay. So, oh, you said 23rd to 26th. Oh, sorry. 20, it's yeah. 23rd to 25th, yeah. it's 8 p.m. Yeah. And then 26th, which is a Sunday, it's at 3 p.m. And obviously we're talking about April now. March. It's, uh, it's just next week. It's March. It's this it's week. It's tomorrow. It's tomorrow. Yes. It's yes. <laughs> <laughs> we're, opening so this, yeah. tomorrow. we're opening tomorrow. We're opening tomorrow. Okay, so we, we're very happy to have you here in studio the Thank day before. You. And yeah, uh, an important call to all of our viewers to go out and grab those tickets while they are still available, just four days. Yeah. Yeah. Let me thank both of you for coming into studio. And Tsieng Wohoro is a creative director and Tabo Ramayine is an actor in this play entitled Sikashlelu OR. Still ahead for